Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have um, the kids come up one at a time to ask you a question, if that's okay. Okay, sounds great. Uh, I'm going to highlight. I want them to see you. It's how do I, let's see. Huh? What does that mean? Here. Yay, there you are. Okay, I see you big. All right, um, who was the person that was asking Colby's question? Yeah. All right, come on up, Jacob. This is Jacob. Hi, Jacob. My name's JP. Nice to meet you. You can take your mask off. What did you look like when you What did you look like when you were younger? And what was one of your hobbies when you were younger? What did I look like when I was younger? Well, I didn't have the beard. <laughs> so imagine me, but no beard, smaller face. I had redder hair. Um and I was really into baseball, so I was always wearing baseball uniforms, kind of like your Atlanta Braves mask there. Uh, and what instrument did I play? I first really loved playing the piano. That was the first instrument I played. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. He's asking Meg's question. All right, come on up, Jane. Go ahead and talk your stuff and tell them your name. Ella, um, my name is Jane, and um, how long have you been doing music? Hi, Jane. Nice to meet you. Um, I've been doing music, well, I've been doing music for my job since I was maybe 18 or 19. Uh, when I was your age... I loved playing music, but I didn't really think of it yet as something I wanted to do with my life. I just knew it was something that made me happy. But as I grew up, I realized that it was still the thing that made me happier than anything else. So I worked really hard at it so it could be what I did with my life. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Who is doing me on this question? Okay, come on, Alex. We can take him. Hi. Hi, Alex. Nice to meet you. Um, when did you start to write music? Um, I think I wrote my first song when I was maybe 13 years old. Uh, so <laughs> it wasn't, I'm not sure how good of a song it was, but I loved, I loved doing it because I felt like something that I felt that I didn't know how to say to my friends or my parents or my teachers if I wrote it down in a song, then I was able to actually share it. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Um. What was the first song you wrote? Uh, the first song I wrote. It's kind of silly. Will you promise not to tell anybody if I tell you? So the first song I wrote when I was 12 years old was called, Hey Pretty Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a very silly name for a song. Um, but luckily I've gotten better at writing songs since Hey Pretty Baby. <laughs> um, and I've probably written, you know, 10,000 since then. But if I had never started with that very silly song, then I never would have gotten to the songs I wrote now. So I had to write that song to get started. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Hi, my name's Harper. And what musical instruments do you normally use? Uh, hi, Harper. Nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> the main instruments that I use to write are the piano and the guitar. But I didn't learn how to play the guitar till I was 16 or 17. And I learned how to play it because I really wanted to write songs wherever I was. And it was easier to learn guitar than to get strong enough to carry a piano around. <laughs> My name is Julian. And my question is, what was your favorite instrument when you were little or like now? Um, hi, Julian. Nice to meet you. Uh, well, if my singing voice counts, I really love to sing. 
because no matter where I am, just like no matter where you are, you can always sing and you can always sing with other people, which I love. Um, and the piano, because, you know, sitting at the piano and singing is just, it's a really, it can be really magical to, to sit at a piano and sing because it's just nothing else exists when you're doing that. Okay, shut the real camera. Y'all keep your um. It just says. Um. Hi, my name is Mary Catherine. Hi, Mary Catherine. My name is Shep. Nice to meet you. Um, what inspires you to write music? Um. Well, usually what inspires me is a feeling that I don't know how to share without putting it in a song. Because when you have a simple feeling, it's easy to just turn to your friend and be like, hey, that makes me really happy, or that made me sad, or I love you, or that hurt me. But when the feeling is a little bit more complicated, sometimes using an instrument and using a song is a way to get the details of the feeling that are harder to just say. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You got this. You're confident. He's very nervous, JP. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be great. I'm a little nervous, too. Nice to meet you, JP. My name is nice. Grant. Um, um, so my question was, what is your goal for each piece of music you write? Hmm. My goal is for it to be as honest as possible. Because I find when we're really honest with ourselves, that's when other people can understand the best. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. You did great. What is the good thing about being famous? Huh. Well, to be honest, your name is Hannah? Yes. To be honest, Hannah, I don't feel very famous because I'm not allowed to leave my house very often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the good... <laughs> so that's the first answer that comes to mind. But I think the good thing about people caring what I have to say is because I have the opportunity to say things that I really believe in and have people listen. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emma and my question is what is the bad thing about being famous? Uh, Hi, Emma. Nice to meet you. Good question. Um, I have to be honest, I don't think I've, I'm famous enough or have been famous long enough to really know, um, because, you know, I never thought when I was younger that I wanted to be famous. That wasn't my goal. My goal was to be able to make music for a living and have people want to hear that music. Now, what goes along with that is when people want to hear your music, if enough people hear it, then you, I guess, becomes kind of famous. Um, but I'll have to get back to you on the bad parts because I haven't found any yet. <laughs> my teacher told me to tell you it was my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Are you 10 today? Yes, sir. I had a lot of fun being a 10-year-old. I hope you have an amazing year. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay. So, JP, one of the things that, like I said, we were talking about and what they're going to be doing when um, we get back from the holiday break mm -hmm. is to um, write their own piece of music based off of something that inspires them. So um, I've read an article about how you have a journal mm -hmm. and that you um, – take things from your journal. Can you tell the kids a little bit about that and your process for um, writing music? Sure. Um, well, remember earlier how I said the most important thing to me in my songs was that they were honest? Well, I find it's easier to be honest if I'm just always writing things down when I feel them. You know, if I, 
If I have a thought during the day or when I can't sleep, I'll write it in my journal. And then when I go to write a song, I'll open up that journal and see, hmm, that thought feels like maybe it's the start of a song. Or that thought may feel like the title of a song. In that way, they're thoughts that come right out of the moment and not something that I have to make up when I'm in the studio. That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, do you have any advice for like budding songwriters or budding musicians that we have here in our room? Hmm. Any advice? Well, to me, the best part of being a songwriter is that it's the thing that I, it's the thing I always felt the most myself doing. Um, it, it was, I know it sounds a little funny to say it was the first place I learned how to talk to myself, but I think talking to, knowing how to talk to yourself and have conversations with yourself is a really important skill. And for me, doing that in songs was how I got better at it. So my, my advice would be, if you like what it feels like when you write a song and you get to have that conversation with yourself, don't worry about the song being good. Because remember, the first song I wrote when I was 12 years old, older than you, was called Hey Pretty Baby, and it was really, really bad. <laughs> um, but if you like doing it, don't worry about it being good or you know, impressing anybody. Just think about how it makes you feel and if you enjoyed writing it. And if you did, do another one and then do another one and then do another one. And maybe you'll find yourself a 27-year-old like me who gets to do that for their job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was really fantastic. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. My principal is here. She would like to ask you a question too. Okay. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Nice hey, to I'm meet Miss you. I'm I first of all want to say that it's pajama day. Well, it's pajama day for the adults. <laughs> we don't always march around in our flannel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for being here for our children and this opportunity. I have a selfish question for you. Sure. There's three adults in here. Miss um, McKinnon is their teacher and Miss McIntyre, of course, their music teacher. And I get to work with them in a different way. If you had advice for adults, as you reflect on adults who were meaningful, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and kind of got you to where you are, what can we do to help make sure that children are able to pursue their passions and feel supported in doing so? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I mean, to be transparent, I, I didn't have a very straight ahead relationship with school because I, I learned differently, I guess, than some of the other kids in my class. Um, but I, there were always a few teachers, or at least a couple teachers in middle school and in high school, who told me that the thing I was good at, which was having conversations about, you know, what the people in the books we were reading were feeling, or, you know, even if I didn't finish the essay, I had all kinds of questions about why the characters did the things they did and what they were feeling and what they were thinking about. And there was a teacher I had in grade eight who told me that that in itself was a skill. And that wasn't something I'd heard up to that point. And thinking back on that, knowing that my entire life is trying to understand my own emotions, it being pointed out to me that there were, there were different kinds of intelligence and me not being very good at finishing an essay or a math test, but me being good at talking to my friends about, you know, what was going on at home with their parents or, you know, the, the other kid who was bullying them, like that, that could be a skill set I based my life on was something that I think gave me the confidence to like not, you know, not feel inferior, but, but actually have some confidence that, you know, I could lean into that and build the kind of life I have now from that. I made the mistake of sitting down. That was really cool to hear. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, my pleasure. Thanks for asking. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he asked, 
He asked, what was Hey Pretty Baby like? Um, <laughs> it, was a, <laughs> it was about um, the girl who lived next door to me who <laughs> I, I thought was kind of pretty. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So did you take music lessons or are you self-taught? Um, I, I took piano lessons um, when I was younger. But to be honest, when I was 9 or 10, I didn't really even like piano lessons yet. Um, it wasn't until I was 13 or 14 when I started hearing music that I loved. And I thought, wait, I want to be able to make that music. But the piano teachers I had when I was 9 weren't nearly as much fun as this. Maybe I should try and remember some of that so I can play this music that I'm hearing on the radio. Who are, I have one more question. I keep thinking yeah. of ones, I'm sorry. No, Who are uh, musicians that inspire you? Hmm. Um, well, I've always really loved the Beatles. Um, I've always really loved Carole King. I, who are some of your favorite musicians? Who, who, are, who are you guys listening to right now? Um, John, can you tell us really loud? Imagine Dragons. Very cool. Yeah. Who else? Anybody have one, somebody that they really love to listen to? Judd? Da Baby. Da Baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jane? Kids Bop. She listens to Kids Bop. Kids Bop is great. And yeah. one of my one of my best friends is the pianist in Imagine Dragons. Really cool. Yeah. All right, Caleb. Ugly dot. Ugly dot. Yeah. Did you hear that, JP? Ugly I did. Dot. I did. Okay. I did. <laughs> All right, uh, Emma. Um, I like listening to music that could inspire me. Did you hear her? I, I didn't. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> yes, I <know>. again. <laughs> um, I like listening to you because you inspire me to write my own music. Oh, thank you. That's a really nice thing to say. I feel like you just gave me a, a compliment birthday present on your birthday. <laughs> Grant, um, I had a question, um, but it was just... Who's the best person in this room? <laughs> Me! <laughs> um, Grant, I'm going to give you a diplomatic answer, but I think all of you are probably the best at something. Very good answer. <laughs> all right. JP, thank you so much. Do you have any questions for the kids? That was a great one. They loved talking to you about that. So. <laughs> sure. Um, Okay, I have a question for, for some of you, and I'm sure you can, your teachers can pick some of you to answer this question. But if you could get one feeling into a song that you don't really know how to say, what would that feeling be? Oh, that's Brandon. You want to come up and talk? So mine would be happiness. Yeah. Happiness. happiness. And when I'm older, like when I'm 16 or 17, 17, I might start writing my own songs. Okay. He said when he's 16 or 17, he might start writing his own songs. That's great. <laughs> All right. If y'all want to come up here and to answer, then I can call on you. Grant, do you want to? So do you remember his question? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, if I had to capture one emotion in a piece of music, what I would pick is just like, it's hard to describe in words, mm -hmm. but <laughs> that reflects on what you said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like s insults and being scared of them and just hmm. trying to be you. Grant, that's a really good answer. And I think I can really relate to that because... I think one of the first things I loved about writing songs was it was the first place I felt okay about being myself. Because I was really shy when I was younger and I, I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. And being able to write songs is what really helped me think it was okay to be myself. So I, I, feel, I feel you. <laughs> I hope you write that song someday. Thank you.
Uh, my name is John, and if I could put a feeling into a piece of music, I'd do Overwhelmed and Scared. Yeah. Well, John, nice to meet you. And that's a, that's a really good answer because often, you know, being overwhelmed and scared is something that you want to be able to sit and think about because if you can understand it enough to put it in a song, it gets a little less overwhelming and a little less scary. Hi, I'm Amelia, and if I could, uh, it would be calm. Calm. Mm -hmm. That's a really good answer, too, because we all need things that make us feel calm nowadays. Yeah. Um, I'm Judd. Um, mine would probably be, like, when I'm mad at my parents or something. Yeah. It's tough to be mad at your parents, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's hard for me too. Yeah, it's and that's a good thing to put in your song because sometimes if you're mad at your parents, you don't want to be mad at them right away. You want to think about it a little and figure it out. And a song is a really good way to do that. And also, I like your Kawhi jersey. <laughs> it's even harder to be mad at your teachers. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> MSF, one more time. <laughs> So if I could put the fat feeling into my song, it'd probably be sometimes at school something happens and I don't know how to tell my parents what happened. So I keep it inside me. And sometimes when I get the chance, it's just I think it's more easier to tell my friends it. Yeah. So I would try and find a way that I could tell my parents how I actually feel. I love that answer. And I think maybe you should try and do that. So often my songs are things that I would be afraid to tell somebody. But if I can put it in a song, then I feel a little bit more brave about it. Thank you. Anybody else? JP, thank you so much. Again, my pleasure. This has just been amazing and just a real, real impact on I know for me personally, but also for them. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I, I love you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everybody. You're the best. You guys are the best. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you.